Hello and welcome to the tutorial on sexual dysfunction uh, related with antidepressant use. And this is certainly a very common station in the CASC exam, uh, and rightly so given the, the non-compliance rates um, of, of um, patients on antidepressants uh, because of uh, sexual side effects, and uh, this is also similar to, to antipsychotic use. So, um, so this is certainly um, a station to um, expect in the exam. So let's just look at the way the first uh, part of the link station was structured, where we're talking to uh, the husband, who's been referred by, by the CPN, uh, wanting to come off the, the antidepressant medication. And so um, after introducing myself and setting the scene, again, using an open question, uh, to get um, to get a, a good idea of, of the, uh, the depressive history um, from the husband, as it's the first time you've met them, and you want to get an idea of um, the circumstances of why of why he got depressed, describing life at that time, what depressive symptoms he was suffering with, when he was first started um, on an antidepressant, um, how long he'd been on it for. Um, what dosage he was on, and whether he'd been on antidepressants before. And what we want to do is be um, getting uh, a gauge of how his depressive symptoms have changed since he's been on the antidepressant uh, to see if there's been any improvement. Uh, and then looking at uh, exploring why he wants to come off the medication. Uh, and then I think one of the, the key things uh, which, you, which is important to demonstrate is the fact that he's only been on it for six weeks. Uh, and so, in the treatment of first, on, uh, first onset depression, as you know, uh, it's recommended that, that patients remain on antidepressants for a period of six months. And so, it's a good idea to, to, to mention that to, to him, uh, explain the risk of relapse, and then seeing if uh, he, he wishes to reconsider his, um, his decision about wanting to come off the antidepressant. Uh, and um, as you guess, he uh, still wishes to remit to, to, to come off it. And so then we w went on to a discussion about the exploration of side effects. Um, and then again, the, the way I um, uh, chose to do this was again just as, uh, starting off with um, uh, exploring if he had any general side effects before moving on to whether he was experiencing any sexual side effects. And again, a, a good way to approach this is, is by normalising any of the um, side effects that he's suffering with uh, and reassuring him that these are uh, common side effects uh, which are experienced when patients do take antidepressant medication. So a classic line, as you saw in, in, in the video, it's very common for people to experience side effects. Have you been experiencing any since you've been started on this medication? Uh, and, then, and then moving that on to say it's also very common for, for people to experience sexual side effects. Have you um, have you been experiencing any of these? And then again, a demonstration um, of empathy uh, as he found it embarrassing. And again, the key things uh, with with these types of sensitive um, uh, uh, question asking is is to be familiar with them and uh, demonstrate a sense of professionalism when you're asking those questions uh, to give the examiner the to give the examiner the impression that you, you've done this countless of, uh, times before, uh, and this, and that you, do, you don't make uh, you don't make the patient uh, feel uncomfortable uh, in any way when discussing these issues. Uh, it's a similar um, concept to the sexual offender uh, assessment, which you see in the forensic uh, section of this course, where we're asking sensitive questions in the psychosexual history. And what the forensic CAS examiner in that video had emphasised was the fact that you needed to look professional and comfortable asking uh, these sensitive questions. So, so after, after, um, after and then in terms of looking at uh, the, the, the actual sexual side effects in detail, so we looked at, uh, initially looking, looked at libido changes and whether these had changed uh, since he'd been started on the antidepressant medication and in the video his libido had actually uh, improved since being on the antidepressant. However, we then went on to some, some questions about um, 
uh, pressure, uh, performance anxiety, uh, then asked questions that, uh, around impotence, questions around uh, difficulty ejaculating, uh, questions around whether he had um, erections in the morning. Um, and again, uh, when we look, go through the script here, I've got some questions uh, here which you, which you um, could use uh, to help you uh, gain that history. And the way I try to remember the, the questions to ask uh, in terms of sexual side effects is, um, if you'll uh, forgive me, just going through a chronological process of um, if you're about to, to make love to your partner. So A, um, do you desire them? So are there any changes in desire? So that would be the first thing to ask regarding uh, libido. Then when you're in the room with them, do you feel pressured or um, uh, to, to perform? So then you ask about pressure or performance anxiety. Then um, are you able to, to gain an erection, so in, impotence? And then after, um, once you've gained an erection, are you able to, to actually ejaculate? Uh, and then after, um, I can speak for guys here, once, once you've ejaculated, obviously everybody becomes, obviously guys become tired, and then you fall asleep, and then in the morning, are you able to, to have it? Are you able to experience erections in the morning? So, um, so again, that's just a, that's just the way I, I've uh, uh, remembered uh, as, asking the questions for sexual side effects, uh, and I, I seem to have uh, not forgotten, which has been quite quite uh, quite useful. And one of the key things to emphasise uh, when you are uh, when the when the, the patient is discussing sexual side effects, is to demonstrate to them and to the examiner that you are taking um, all of these uh, symptoms extremely seriously, um, so that the so the patient doesn't feel embarrassed, and you're demonstrating to the examiner that you uh, that you're aware of how common a problem this is. We then went on to the impact uh, these um, side effects were having. On his relationship, uh, and then uh, one of the things I could have uh, done in a, bit, a little bit more detail on the video to demonstrate um, is to look at any, any the exploration of any other potential triggers for his sexual dysfunction. So, a question along the lines of: outside of uh, the medication, is there anything else you think that could be contributing uh, to a deterioration in your, in, in your sexual performance? Do you think? Uh, so, so a question on those lines, we're just we're looking at whether there were any other psycho psychological or social stresses which could have uh, been contributing uh, to that. Additionally, what I, um, uh, I, I just think as a formality uh, to also do is, is just to confirm to the patient uh, to say that, you know, are the uh, sexual side effects the main reason he, he wishes to discontinue? Um, just so that you're, we're, we're all absolutely clear that that's the main reason he does want to come off the medication. Um, but in this video, I think we got a good idea that the, the rate, his relationship with his wife was, was, was good uh, prior to him becoming depressed um, and that he was aiming to get back to work so there weren't any other social uh, contributing factors. Um, but again, I mean, I mean, what uh, I think the, the, the key thing is just uh, it's just important not to assume that it that these sexual side effects are solely secondary to to the antidepressant use. We then went on to looking at any any risk issues briefly, so whether he these had um, these thoughts had got too much, and whether he had any uh, suicidal ideation. Then looking at any previous past medical history, so key things to look at there, for example, or any other cardiovascular. Uh, evidence of any other cardiovascular disease or, or diabetes, anything else that could affect uh, sexual dysfunction, um, any of the alter, other medications um, also to bear in mind, uh, beta blockers for example can cause um, impotence, uh, and then uh, substance misuse, uh, so, uh, medications like, uh, well not medications, drugs like cocaine um, will, 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 uh, can, can cause uh, sexual dysfunction. And then we went on to uh, looking at uh, the, exp the explanation of what was going on and confirming that all of these side effects are typical of being on, a, on an SSRI and what the management options were. So the management options I gave uh, in this example were uh, staying on the medication uh, because he'd, had all, he'd already noticed an improvement in his depressive symptoms, including an improvement in his libido, and that there was room for improvement, uh, which 
uh, uh, would have could have had a knock-on effect on his uh, on his uh, sexual uh, side effects. And then the other options were lowering the dose um, of his antidepressant as he was on 40 milligrams of fluoxetine. Uh, but if uh, if there was a reduction, being uh, vigilant. Uh, in terms of monitoring his depressive symptoms to see, um, to, to look for any potential signs of re relapse. Or then the alternative of switching to an, an alternative medication, uh, such as metazapine. But emphasising that uh, this um, may help with the sexual side effects, but may not necessarily, not, may not necessarily um, work well in terms of treating his depressive symptoms. So let's, uh, let's just go through some of the key um, issues in the script for uh, this, this particular section. So, hello Mr. X, your, your CPN had asked me to see you as you'd expressed some concerns about wanting to come off your medication. Would it be okay if I asked you a few questions about it? I understand that you were seen earlier this year and were started on antidepressant medication. Could you tell me why that was? How long have you been on them for? How have you been finding them? So again, just general questions on um, getting an idea about uh, his depressive history and uh, the antidepressant use. And have you noticed any changes to your mood? Have there been any improvements? How would you describe your energy levels now? Is there anything that you enjoy doing at the moment? How was that for you prior to being on medication? And so there is, there is an improvement reflecting that back. So it seems that there's been some improvement um, on the medication so far. Would you say that's fair to say? On a scale from zero to 10, from where you were before, where do you think you are now? And again, the reason we're, we're looking at that is, is to then gauge to see if there is room for improvement, uh, justifying, uh, so then you'd be justified uh, in saying to him when we're looking at the, the, the explanation of management, uh, that there is room for improvement. If he says that, uh, you know, I'm on a six or a seven. And then, um, I haven't put this on the, on the script lines here, but if you remember on the video, uh, we spoke about um, the importance of emphasizing uh, the fact that the evidence suggests that um, and we would recommend that he remains on antidepressant medication for six months if it's his first presentation, as he would risk relapsing if he came off the medications too soon. Um, and, uh, and obviously, you've seen how that was demonstrated on the video. Uh, and, and so, one, uh, and so um, after you, given that explanation, we could then utilize questions such as So, what do you think could happen if he came off the medication? Uh, and then he would say, uh, well, there's a chance that I would relapse, and then and then look and then gently exploring. So I was just a little curious as to why you'd want to risk relapsing or, or risk that, um, just to see if um, he he's uh, he, he would mention that he was having sexual side effects at that point. If he if if they don't disclose it, then then it's um, um, as we say, just going uh, to ask about side effects from a general perspective. I'd just like to ask you some other questions, if I may. Have you had any side effects which have worried you? Uh, and then, if they, you know, and, and then again, uh, this is all dependent on what on what, what the the patient would say to you. But again, the key thing is um, in terms of approaching it is to normalise it so they don't feel embarrassed. So, uh, some some people who take uh, antidepressant medications do notice a deterioration in their sexual performance. Have you noticed any changes like that at all? And then and then see what they say. And then, and then again, having an empathic statement of, of how difficult or frustrating um, it must have been for them. And, and also uh, an em emphasising that you are taking uh, those symptoms very seriously. Uh, okay, and then um, we continue. So would it be okay if I asked you a few more questions about that once they've disclosed issues around their, their sexual dysfunction? Uh, some of these, I appreciate that some of these questions may be a little personal, but they are just a standard part of my assessment. How would you describe your relationship with your wife in general? Okay, and then 
and then we're then we're, we're looking at um, any of the any of the the issues around his sexual dysfunction, depending on what he says, and then get, getting it get, get, getting an idea of, of uh, the onset of these. So, when did you first notice these changes? Um, could you describe what these were like when you were depressed before you started antidepressant treatment? So, in that context, we're looking at whether his libido has has, has improved uh, since being on antidepressant medication. Has he ever experienced um, any sexual side effects like this before? And have they changed in any way since being on the, medica on the medication? So again, just a, a repeat of what we've, we've talked about there. Have you noticed any changes in your desire to be intimate with your partner? So again, that's a, a good question to ask uh, directly about, about libido. Do you feel pressured in any way to be intimate with your partner? So again, that's obviously looking at pressure uh, or performance anxiety. Um, uh, and then do you have any difficulties gaining an erection at all? And do you have any difficulties maintaining an erection? Do you have any problems ejaculating? Uh, and are you able to get erections in the morning? And then looking at impact, how has this impacted on your relationship with your wife? Could there be any other reasons as to why these changes have occurred, do you think? So again, looking at any other potential triggers. So it's certainly worth asking about that, which I, I didn't um, emphasize in the video. And again, uh, any potential risk issues with, with, with this. You know, has, has this all ever felt too much or has this ever all got too much? What do you mean? Have you had any thoughts about not wanting to carry on, for example? And so again, uh, maybe summarising what you've gained from, from the consultation so far. So since being on the fluoxetine, you've shown some improvements in your depressive symptoms, notably your mood, energy and interest, le interest levels. Although your libido has improved, you have difficulty maintaining an, an, an erection and climaxing. Is that accurate? Okay, and, then, and then looking at some of the other things we spoke about in the structure, do you have any other medical problems at all? Do you drink alcohol at all? Do you smoke? Or do you take any of the street drugs? And again, we're, looking, uh, we're, we're asking those to see if, it, if any of these lifestyle indicators are affecting his, his physical performance. Would you be happy to carry on taking uh, this medication if we were able to deal with these side effects? So again, that's a, that's a good question to ask um, uh, regarding whether the sexual side effects were the sole reason for wanting to discontinue. Has he discussed coming off medications uh, with his wife? Uh, this is a good, certainly a very good question to ask as well, which I didn't uh, do in the video. And again, what we're looking at, uh, looking for there as to whether he's, whether these sexual side effects um, have impacted on the relationship and whether his, his wife is, is pressuring him to, to come off the medication. Um, and then again, we, we had, I've got some brief, uh, uh, lines here on uh, talking about um, explanation and management. So these sexual side effects are relatively common with antidepressants. In terms of your desire to come off them, th there are a number of different approaches we could take. The first is to actually keep you on them. In six weeks it has already shown an improvement in your depressive symptoms, including your libido. If you continue to take it, there is still scope for further improvement in your depressive symptoms including your sexual performance, as your body does adapt to having this medication in its system. Our second option would be to lower the dose, but monitor your depressive symptoms and side effects vigilantly to ensure that you don't relapse. Our third option would be to try you on a different antidepressant. Metazapine may be an option, however there is no guarantee that it will work as well as fluoxetine in managing your depressive symptoms. Different medications also potentially could mean different side effects. And again, uh, other key things to, to, to help to put the patient at ease is, you know, there is no need to make, we don't need to make a decision about this today. And I can pro provide you with some more uh, information about, about different antidepressants and we could re rearrange another appointment. Uh, and again, seeking consent if you do have the time um, uh, is also a, a good thing to demonstrate uh, and then again uh, closing the, st the station appropriately with some of the, uh, the statements that you see, you see there on the slide. 
And then in the, the second scenario, we are uh, discussing uh, our uh, findings uh, from, from the assessment with the husband, uh, with the wife. So let's look at the key parts uh, in, in this station. And again, the, the, the first aim is to, to really gain her understanding of, of the current situation. And uh, what the things that we, we need to do here are to confirm uh, whether her um, description of the situation uh, is similar to uh, the findings that you gathered from the assessment uh, with her husband. Uh, and then um, we then went looked also looked at uh, her um, understanding of how it, of how um, his symptoms had impacted on their on their marriage. Then went into a little more detail uh, in terms of exploring uh, their, their current sexual relationship. And again, uh, the reasons we're, we're, we're doing all, all, all of this are to look for any other potential triggers, which we didn't identify uh, when we were speaking to the husband. So again, prefixing them by, by saying that um, uh, I just need to ask some, some questions which are of personal nature, but they're just standard, standard part of the assessment. Uh, and then um, I asked questions around uh, their sexual relationship before he was unwell, issues around um, pressure or performance anxiety, and then um, exploring whether there were any other sexual uh, side effects uh, which she had noticed but uh, which the, her husband hadn't uh, described to me. We then went on to an explanation um, of, of the findings. Um, so I reiterated the findings of the assessment in that um, uh, his depressive symptoms had improved, uh, including his libido, uh, which is one of the uh, biological symptoms of depression, but there'd been a deterioration in his sexual performance, and that these uh, side effects were secondary to the antidepressant medication he was on. Uh, and it's also important to, to reassure the wife um, uh, if, if she is, is, is having if she does uh, say remarks like, I think it's me, I've put on weight, or he's not attracted to me anymore, uh, and re reassuring her uh, that that's not the case, um, I think is a, is a useful thing to do. Um, and obviously when, when you're giving, giving her information, again, checking that she uh, understands uh, the information that you're, you're, you're giving her um, is obviously also very, a very important thing to do. She then um, asked questions about my, um, how we manage the situation, and uh, that, that is something uh, which we've discussed uh, in, uh, in the previous station. And then we went on to addressing any of the concerns that she raised, for example, whether they could use Viagra, uh, and as you saw in the video again, uh, going through the general principles of exploring all of the other options first, including um, the optimization of his lifestyle, uh, so for example, reducing alcohol, increasing exercise, that, that type of thing. Uh, and then, dependent on the scenario that you get, you may you may get questions about uh, couples therapy. Um, uh, but in this in this particular context, uh, there was no there were no marital issues really uh, uh, prior to him uh, developing sexual side effects, so it wasn't warranted in this particular scenario. So let's just briefly look at the script for this particular part of the station. Hello, Mrs. X. I've just spoken to your husband as he had expressed concerns about the medication that he'd been on. Were you aware of these concerns at all? Were you aware of uh, why he wished to stop them? He's already given me some information. However, it would be extremely useful if you could share with me what your understanding of the situation has been. I appreciate that this must have been difficult for the both of you. How have you been coping? Yes, that's certainly what I found when I spoke to him as well. He had noticed an improvement in his depressive symptoms, but had found that his sexual performance had declined. Would you mind if I ask you some questions? They are of a personal nature, but they will give me an accurate clinical picture of what's happening at the moment. How long have you been married for? And prior to him getting depressed, how was your sexual relationship with him? Did he ever feel pressured or anxious about being sexual with you? Had he ever had any problems with his sexual performance before getting depressed? 
Outside of the main classic symptoms of depression, like low mood, low energy, and having no real enjoyment, people can also suffer what are called biological symptoms of depression because they affect the body, for example, like poor sleep, poor appetite, and a loss of libido. Does that make sense? After talking to your husband, he found that since being on antidepressant medication, some of his depressive symptoms have improved, including some of his libido. However, his sexual performance had declined. His decline in his sexual performance is most likely as a result of the antidepressant that he's taking. He still has a healthy interest in sex and still very much, still very much wants to be with you. However, feels anxious and insecure about his inability to perform for you. There are a number of options we have to help. The first option is for him to remain on his medication. His depressive symptoms have already shown some improvements in the past six weeks if he remains on this medication, so there is a probable chance that his depressive symptoms and libido will continue to improve. There is also a chance that his decline in his sexual performance will, it will improve of its own accord. A second option could be at looking to reduce his dose from 40 milligrams to 20 milligrams a day to see if this could help alleviate his side effects. However, we would need to also monitor him vigilantly to ensure that his depressive symptoms do not worsen. A third option would be to trial him on a different medication, for example, an antidepressant like metazapine, as this could improve his sexual side effects, but there is no guarantee that it would improve his depressive symptoms as much. There are also other possibilities we could offer you if you both felt it could help. For example, we could refer you to for couples therapy to have the opportunity to explore any anxieties you each might be having regarding your sex life. However, you may not feel that this is required given that there were no pre-existing problems before he became unwell. There are other options, for example, Viagra. However, we would only use this once all the other options had been trialled and we would also need agreement and supervision from your GP. Is there anything else that you'd like to ask me? Let's just briefly talk about uh, uh, sexual dysfunction in antidepressant uh, use. So, um, as you know, uh, there's, there's an increased incidence of sexual dysfunction uh, which has been reported with antidepressant use, uh, especially with regard to uh, use of SSRIs and the estimates of sexual dysfunction associated with SSRIs uh, range from very small percentages to more than 80% uh, and the actual frequency is, it, it, um, isn't is known but, uh, there's, uh, a couple, uh, but there was one study that um, I managed to find and it's, it said that the prevalence of sexual dysfunction in the UK and France is, is estimated to be um, about 39% about uh, in the UK and, uh, and about, uh, th uh, about 30% uh, in, in France. And um, if you look at the, uh, the, reference, the references uh, on the course, you can, you know, you'll be able to see which journals I, I, I found that information from. But I think, I mean, the key thing I'm trying to emphasise here is that it's, it's um, sexual dysfunction um, is always an important um, uh, factor uh, to, to be aware of if uh, patients are wanting to come off their medication uh, and it's, a, it's obviously very similar with antipsychotic medication and so it's, it's, it's extremely important to, 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 to be aware of this and asking this when you're faced with that um, clinically and uh, that's, that's probably the main reason why this, um, this, this question came up uh, in the CASC exam. Um, and again, uh, we're just going going through some old ground here, but uh, it's just again useful to have, to have it uh, ticking over in your mind. Um, so some of the common causes of um, sexual dysfunction in um, in general are obviously a loss of libido as a result of the depression, substance ongoing substance abuse. Um, so I've got their alcohol, smoking, and cocaine are um, the obvious choices there. Any comorbid physical illness, such as cardiovascular disease or diabetes. Any uh, medications, uh, any other medications outside of the antidepressants, which they're on, which could be contributing, and I've uh, listed some examples there. Uh, and then again, also looking for any other psychosocial stressors, such as marital discord. 
And then again, uh, the uh, signs and symptoms of uh, sexual dysfunction. So as we've already discussed, uh, loss of loss of libido. So uh, again, that's an, obviously as you know, um, change in desire or inability to initiate or enjoy sex. In terms of uh, for men, um, erectile dysfunction, the inability to gain uh, an erection, um, is common. In women, it's actually the loss of uh, loss of lubrication. Um, and in, in men again, uh, the ability to, to ejaculate, um, and again in, in women again, there's a, uh, it's a delayed a delayed orgasm as a sexual uh, side effect, uh, and ejaculatory uh, dysfunction in in men. And then uh, again, we're going over uh, old ground here, but just just to keep it uh, ticking over in your mind in terms of the management issues. Uh, one of the things I, I actually didn't emphasise earlier was that uh, sexual functioning obviously fluctuates um, in, 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 in ordinary life. So uh, that's something to, to um, talk to talk to patients uh, about as well. Um, and then when we spoke about switching uh, antidepressants, again, the key things to emphasise are that this may have an improvement on their sexual side effects, uh, but may not necessarily uh, treat their depressive symptoms as effectively. Um, and then some of the alternatives that we could use were, were metazapine, uh, which would, are known to, to cause uh, lesser sexual side effects. Um, and then again, the other things are obviously promoting uh, the patient to, to, to be involved in sexual activity just before they, they take um, their antidepressant medication. And we spoke about promotion of lifestyle changes such as weight reduction exercise and uh, uh, smoking cessation. One of the other things that um, ha has been has been mentioned is is promoting the use of drug holidays. For example, two to three days um, where where you're having expected sexual activity. Um, that's something I'm 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 not too sure about. I mean, um, from a pharmacological perspective, I would say if you're treating depression, then they need to remain on the antidepressant medication. Uh, but I have a discussion with. Um, uh, you're, and you're obviously with, with people that you work with to see what their, their view is on that. And then, um, we, and then some of the other alternate uh, uh, management techniques that, that uh, could come up. Um, we've, we've spoken about um, switching uh, antidepressant uh, medication, but there are also adjunctive treatments that we could use, such as bupropion and amantadine. Um, and as we uh, mentioned in the video, uh, Viagra uh, is, uh, is something that, that is used, provided all of the other avenues of, of treatment um, have, have been uh, looked at. Um, I'm not entirely sure on the evidence base of herbal remedies such as ginseng or Chinese herbs, so generally speaking I don't mention those in, in, in an exam situation. Um, and then looking at other, other techniques such as uh, sensate focus, um, and that is, uh, 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 that's a process in which um, you're looking at increasing personal and interpersonal awareness of, of, of yourself and, and your other partners. Uh, sexual needs, uh, and you can encourage each other to, to really focus on their own very varied sense experience, uh, rather than to see um, having an orgasm as, as the sole goal of, of, of having sex. And potential alternate scenarios, um, instead of speaking to a relative, it could be presenting the case to a consultant who may ask some of the questions on the management um, of the case. Or it may be a solely single station, a seven minute consultation, where we're trying to um, elicit the reasons for, want, for a patient wanting to come off uh, the, their antidepressant medication and going through a, uh, uh, a history taking of their sexual side effects. Um, and you can see an example of that um, on, um, on the course, where I've, take, I've done a six, seven minute video of exploring sexual dysfunction um, in a patient who's on antipsychotic use, and so you'll see the principles um, around that. So um, I hope, again, this has been uh, a useful uh, tutorial for you. Uh, we've gone through a lot of information here. 
Uh, and some of the, the, again, the key points to, to take away are A, that sexual dysfunction is, is very common, uh, so it's something to bear in mind when, when uh, you're faced with patients who are wanting to come off their medication. B, it's having uh, a list of questions in your mind uh, to ask when you're asking about sexual side effects uh, and, and giving uh, the, uh, the examiner and the patient uh, the, the impression that you are comfortable um, asking these questions and are demonstrating a sense of professionalism uh, when you're doing that. Uh, and then um, additionally, and uh, also looking at the impact uh, these the sexual side effects have on uh, the relationship and also um, having an understanding of the principles of the management of uh, uh, sexual dysfunction um, with antidepressant use. So, um, good luck with your with your revision. I hope uh, it's coming along well, and I will see you in the next uh, tutorial. Take care.